We have two enemies claiming to hold exclusive truth about wealth transfer. The first is Satan, the father of lies, and the second, the holy prophets of God. We'll first take Satan to question and test his claim of being the one having the truth on this matter. After all, how can the seducer of the whole world tell the truth even if it's just one instance? We'll then examine what the prophets are currently saying about wealth transfer. Their enemy, the devil, who prowls around looking for someone to devour, is claiming the same thing that they too are claiming. After we hear from both Satan and the prophets, we will then settle this matter by hearing what Christ says. After hearing Christ, we will look at the types of wealth in the New Testament. And lastly, a shockingly bizarre thing that is about to happen to silver and gold in the end times. I spent like four weeks, guys, looking at this message. I've been praying, I've been reading scriptures, I've been listening to countless, countless, countless videos on YouTube about wealth transfer. Whatever we say in the kingdom, right? The first thing that must guide us is what is the Bible saying? For me, the heart of everything is what is the Bible saying? So let's first hear what Satan is saying and then we'll hear what the prophets are saying. I am the God of this world. I hold the authority to all the earth's kingdom and I give them to whoever I want. For all the glitters of this world have been relinquished to me. That was Satan's statement. Now let's hear what the prophets are saying. It's like, Lord, you know, all this wealth transfer talk, I believe you're revealing it to me and many others. Um, just give me a, strip, a scriptural confirmation. And remember, I made a video. I saw I saw a vision. I saw Nahum 2.9, where it says, plunder the gold, plunder the silver, right? So I was like, wow, 100% God is in this. You hear the similarities of the statements. It's like Satan and the prophets are saying something that is similar. So that is my dilemma. <laughs> Christ said a lot of things about wealth, but there was never at any point where Christ spoke about wealth and he just left it like that. Christ would speak about wealth and it would be as if he puts it in a big red box and then he writes warning, warning, warning. The Bible says, because of the deceitfulness of wealth, when the word of God was planted into people's hearts, it was choked because of the deceitfulness of wealth. So the first thing that Christ says is wealth is packaged with the spirit of deceit. And he knows that in the end times, we are entering into an age of deception. So imagine that wealth has a spirit of deception. And in the end times, we're entering an age of deception. So why would Christ bring something that has deception inside when the believers are going to enter the age of deception, this age that we've entered into? Another thing that Christ said, he said that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom. So you see Christ every time when he speaks, it's like he speaks about wealth and then he speaks with a warning. So if I bring a prophecy, it must align with what Christ is saying. The first type of wealth that we find is a wealth that is in a place where thieves and moth cannot come and destroy. And then wealth number two is the one that Satan talks about when he says, all the authority of the world and all the power of the world is with me and I give them to whoever I want. So it is the wealth that comes by Satan. And the third type of wealth that we find in the Bible, it's simply the wealth that comes by stewardship. The Bible says, he who is faithful with the little can be trusted with much. Anyone, whether you are born again, not born again, whether you are Muslim, whether you are Satanist, if you are faithful with the little, you can be trusted with much. Here's a question. The church as a whole, if we're being honest with ourselves, have we been faithful with the little? that Christ has given us. We are going to hear someone right now. This person, she's evangelizing in Nepal. So let's just hear her out and then I'll come back. I didn't receive any financial backing from the church. I have asked, um, I've shared about my work. I have tried also before to ask the church to help me with fundraising, uh, where I sell something and like people buy. And then that was going to help me fundraise I'm going to try again this year. Hopefully this time it will work. I don't know if churches in South Africa really do support. I know of one church. 
I know that they love what we do. They um, agree that it's something that should be done, but they never really financially make a, a step in that direction. Even though they've said they would, they, but they never did. This is just one of the f many voices that are laboring in a place where the gospel is most needed. Guys, Nepal, they say that 85% of people in Nepal are staunch Buddhists. There are many, many missionaries, people who are laboring in hostile countries where it is illegal for you to carry the Bible, but the church has not directed their resources to those nations and to those areas. So I honestly don't think that we have been faithful with the little that God gave us. So let us look at what is going to happen to gold and to silver and to money in the end times. Ezekiel chapter 7, your silver and gold will be thrown into the streets like garbage because those are the two things that led you into sin. And now they cannot save you from my wrath. They are not even worth enough to buy you food, guys. The Bible says silver and gold are going to be thrown in the streets in the end times. Hear the heart of God. He says, these are the things that led you into sin, guys. So the Bible says that these things that we are saying we need to get as the church today. The Bible says that these are the things that lead us into sin. I mean, this thing must echo in our hearts when we open the pages of the Bible that God is concerned about this thing. He says, these are the things that led you into sin. And he says, they will not even be enough to buy you food. If you didn't know, know this, gold is going to be thrown in the streets. I hear in America, Christians are buying gold. But honestly, the Bible says that gold and silver is going to be thrown in the streets. And money, this one we all know in the book of Revelation. Revelation 13 verse 17. This is what it says. And no one could buy or sell anything without the mark and the name of the beast or the number of his name. Money is going to be under our skin. If you don't know that, you must know that money is going to move from paper currency to something that is under our skin. And the Bible says it's going to be either on your forehead or on your arm, which is under something that is under your skin. So money is going to be part of our DNA in the end times. And they say, if you don't have it, you cannot buy or you cannot sell. So you realize that us trying to trust in money in the end times, it's as if it's something that is futile because for you to be able to buy or sell, you have to have the mark. And if you take the mark, this is not a video about the mark of the beast, of the beast but if you take the mark, it's going to change your DNA, in fact. You know, but like I'm saying, this is not a video about the mark of the beast, but you must know that money is going to be under your skin. The Bible says on your fore forehead or on your arm. And if you don't have it, you can't buy or sell. So this is where the world is taking money to. We must know that money as it is today, there is an intentional agenda to make it collapse and to make it fail. The best thing that we can do for ourselves in the end times is to develop intimacy with God, is to hear the Holy Ghost. If you don't hear the Holy Ghost, the Bible says, let me give you an example. People are telling me that Israel, when Israel left Egypt, <laughs> they left with the gold of Egypt. But the truth is that what did they do? We have to ask, what did they do with the gold? When they go to the wilderness, the Bible says that they build a calf for themselves and they worship that calf with that gold, guys. You know, So we are not like, our exodus is not the same as the exodus of, 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 of Israel. Israel, the Bible says, when they were in the wilderness, God was giving them manna. But our exodus, uh, the book of Revelation says that, he who overcomes, I will give him hidden manna. So we are going to be given hidden manner. And for you to get this hidden manner, you have to know the voice of God or else you're not gonna get access to this hidden manner because God is going to hide manner for his children. God is going to hide food for his children. The thing that you must fix, guys, is your intimacy with God. That if it's on point, I can assure you, you are going to make it during the end times. When the Antichrist appears, 
you are not going to be deceived. You are not going to fall away like the Bible says. People are going to fall away from the truth. So that is the thing that you must set in place. So instead of us saying money is coming, wealth is coming, God is coming for Christians, we must say let people seek God. Let people develop intimacy with God. We are in the age of deception. And this deception or this great delusion is going to manifest itself in so many ways to the extent that believers are actually going to welcome and worship the Antichrist. So if you want to watch our exposition of how Christians are going to welcome and worship the Antichrist, click on the video that pops up on your screen now. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching this video. Shalom, shalom, shalom.